All right, we move ahead to a, another one of the big winners during the Jacksonville trifecta for the UFC. Chase Sherman kicked off the card last Wednesday night, picked up a second-round TKO win over Ike Villanueva to kick off that card, a triumphant return for the Vanilla Gorilla, and he joins us right now. Chase, how are you, man? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Congratulations on the win. You're back in the UFC. You go in there and get a finish. Now that you've had some time to sort of let it all sink in, how does it all feel? Uh, it feels good, you know. I rode that high for about two or three days, and now I'm, uh, you know, back to normal life. You know, Wednesday night I was putting out people's lights, and then Sunday morning I was putting out people's fires. So we're back to normal life, back to work, and um, you know, trying to get back in the gym and you know get a normal routine going. One of the misconceptions that, that I saw on social media heading into the fight is that when you were released from the UFC, people thought you just sort of vanished off the face of the earth, but you were extremely active, not just on the bare knuckle scene, which people saw, but you were active at MMA as well. You had three first round finishes for island fights to set you up for this call. So to sort of go back in the book a little ways, when you lost that fight to Augusto Sakai in September of 2018 and you were subsequently released... How did you react to all that? Because it certainly seemed to to flip a switch in you. Well, at first, you know, I was kind of embarrassed. I kind of wanted to wash my hands uh, with it. Um, I always told myself, you know, if I didn't, if I didn't uh, make a good go of it in the first go round in the UFC, I, and I got cut, like I was done. I wasn't going to go back to the regional scene and try to fight to get back on. And I was going to try to figure something else out to do. And <clears throat> And uh, so it happened, and I was just like, you know, it's time to figure something else, get get a new niche, find something else I enjoy, um, find a new way to make money. And um, a month or two started passing by, and I was just like, I can't, I can't just, I can't leave a stone unturned, you know what I mean? I have unfinished business. And um, I still had that competitive drive in me, and I knew that there was, there was something left on the table. And um, – I just caught and called him men's like I couldn't, you know, call the in like that. You know? So I, uh, you know, Dean had, Dean had already messaged me. Sorry, Dean had already messaged me um, about a fight that uh, September or that December. I got released in September, um, and um, I was like, yeah, Dean, I, I really, I really ain't feeling it. You know what I mean? I, no, nobody knows I've been released from the UFC just yet, and I just don't want people in my business and. Um, and, uh, you know, I live in a small town. Everybody knows everybody. So I, it's kind of embarrassing to me, you know, knowing that I, got, I lost my job. And uh, but after a while, I was just like, you know, I, I got to I gotta do something. I can't just I just can't go by like this. And, uh, we went on and um, we got we rounded off three wins and um, then the bare knuckle started. So do you remember the moment where you were just like, you know what, I'm I'm, I'm going to do this? Like you, you talked about the road, you got that competitive drive, but do you remember the moment where you're like, okay, I'm back. Like, like that switch flip for you that to get back in the gym and start preparing for another fight. Um, yeah, I mean, it just really kind of happened. Um, it really happened after, after the, after the win, you know, I just need to get that win back under me and get that feeling, you know? And, and, um, I just had to get better, man. You know, I had to get better and I had to, um, get back to enjoying the process um, you know, if all you enjoy, if the only thing you're chasing is wins and that's the only thing you enjoy about it, you're not going to really have a great career because, you know, there's not everybody's going to win every fight. You know what I mean? You got to enjoy the process, the grind just as much as anything. And, um, I had to get back to doing that and enjoy actually training and, and, um, uh, things of that nature. Did you feel like towards the, the latter part of your first UFC run that you were starting to, I guess, fall out of love with the sport, you know, obviously getting in the cage and fighting is there's a different feeling that goes through you, but you know, the preparation and stuff like you talked about, did you feel like you had, uh, had fallen out of love with it a little bit? Well, I just got to the point to where it was, um, repetitive a little bit, you know, and, um, and, and really what it was, man, it was, it was a lot of it was nerves. Um, the first go round, I, I kind of told myself, um, you know, this was my career and, and I have to win. I can't lose. Or, you know, if I get cut, like, what am I going to do? And, um, and, and I would go into fight week and I would just be so ate up with, you know, 
nerves and, and emotion that I just could, I didn't even enjoy it. I wasn't having fun. It was miserable. Um, I was going to all these beautiful cities and in different countries that I've never been and would never get to go to again, probably. And I wasn't even getting to, to draw on the whole experience and um, and uh, really taking the fact that I'm doing something that most people aren't going to ever be able to do and uh, and getting paid to do it. And so, like, I just didn't enjoy the process, man. I'd stay in my room, and I wouldn't eat all week. And, um, you know, like I said, I was just so scared of losing that, you know, I forgot what was important, which was having fun. So I kind of flipped the switch on that going into this time because I just got the call out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it. And I was like, wow, man, I'm truly blessed. Like, I'm going to soak this up because I don't know I, will, I don't know if I'll get another opportunity and that's what it what that's what it is it's not a career it's an opportunity every chance is an opportunity you don't know when you're going to be cut you don't know when you're going to be released you don't know when you're going to get injured um so this isn't a career it's just an opportunity you win you get another opportunity and so that's how I kind of approached the situation and I went out there and I just was like I'm gonna have fun I'm gonna let loose and and and, and let my hands go and I'm gonna do what I know I'm going to do what I know I'm capable of doing. And um, I think you saw a little bit of what I'm capable of doing on fucking six days notice. So, I, you know, I think a lot of things we do, man, we're, it's all here. It's mental. You know, we let our own selves get in the way. With that, you you made a lot of different changes because uh, I saw I, I believe you're a, you're a certified exercise physiologist now. Like you said, you're a firefighter in Gulfport, Mississippi as of last summer. So you've been extremely busy outside of the fight game as well. And, and I know that with me, I love being busy and diving into different things because it keeps me sharp and, and, you know, helps me focus on individual tasks by diving into others, if that makes any sense. But how much has diving into all these different things and taking these new avenues helped you grow as a, as a person along with being the fighter? Yeah. I always try to have my hands in different pots. Um, I've always kind of been like that. And, um, you know, uh, I'll pick up new little things, uh, uh, little hobbies every now and then, and I'll, I get super obsessed with something. Um, and then a couple months later, I'll find something else and I'll get super obsessed with it. And, um, you know, like when hunting season rolled around, I just got super obsessed with hunting. Like that's all I was doing every day on the side was just worrying about going deer hunting and then watching videos and bond guns and, you know, all kinds of stuff and gear. And then when fishing season rolled around, that's all I cared about was going and catch, go wade fishing. You know, every morning I'd wake up and check the tides and I'd go down to the beach and go wade fish out there right before I'd go into work. And then I'd get off from the station and go fish again. And, um, and then it was, you know, working on my Harley. You know, I was just getting so obsessed with like fixing it up and, and doing all that. And then, and then now I've kind of dabbled into, you know, into, uh, firearms. So, um, yeah, I just kind of like that. I get you know, obsessed over things, and then also like I, I I try to do different avenues that might generate some um, some sort of revenue. And uh, like um, you know, I work at the fire station. Um, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. Um, I uh, you know I'm licensed to sell life insurance. Um, I'm a professional fighter, so I try to do all kinds of different things, you know, but. Yeah, it keeps my mom busy. I always say idle hands are the devil's playground. So if you're sitting around a lot, it's you know not typically good for the mental. I would agree with that. How did you enjoy the the bare knuckle experience? That's certainly there's certainly a lot of people out there who feel like bare knuckle is the next big thing in combat sports, and others see it differently. But again, this world can be full of misconceptions. What did you take away from that experience, and how much of a future does bare knuckle have in terms of growth and popularity, in your opinion? Um, you know, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm kind of mixed emotions about a lot of things that went on in bare knuckle. Um, some things that were, um, in a sense that if you're going to be a, you know, call yourself a top organization and you're going to be the next big thing in the world and, and this and that, um, there was a lack of professionalism in a lot of different avenues. And a lot of things that were handled, um, I didn't quite agree with, and most people wouldn't agree with. And I'm kind of going to leave it at that. Um, I will say this. The reason I got into Bare Knuckle was because, A, it was in the local scene. And two, uh, I mean, B, I said A and two. Um, and B, uh, because uh, 
they were paying more money than any other kind of regional MMA uh, show around here. So, um, doing the I was doing the MMA to get back into the UFC. It was never about the money, you know. It never, you know, never is um, on the regional scene. You just need to get the wins. So I was doing that to get the wins to get back in the UFC, and then I was obviously doing the bare knuckle. Um, I was doing the bare knuckle for uh, financial reasons, but I did enjoy it. There was something about it that was really cool. Um, I really enjoy boxing, man. I love the history of boxing, um, and I love the craft. And I really, I truly believe that um, that just working, doing the bare knuckle, changed a lot in my of, of my game. You know, I grew as a fighter as a whole. So, yeah, you know, if. <sighs> I'm glad I did it. I'll just leave it at that. You know, I'm right. glad I did it. You mentioned that this fight came together very quickly. How did you get the news that, you, that you'd be back in the UFC? What was that conversation like? <clears throat> Have you ever met Dean Tool? Have you ever talked to Dean Tool? I talked to him just to set up this interview. It was the first time I've ever spoken with him. Was he professional with you? Very. Was he? Oh, okay. Well, he's not like that with me. We have- <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Anyways, dude, I love that guy. He's dude, he's hilarious. He's taking care of me in so many ways. I mean, I mean that guy. I could just go on about it, but anyways, so I was just ready, ready to go train my my young athletes. Um, and um, he called me and um, he Facetimed me. I answered the phone. He's like, "What's up?" I was like, "What's up, man?" And he always does this, so I didn't think it was nothing special. You know what I mean? He's like, what's up? And I was like, what's up? He goes, what you doing? I said, I'm about to go uh, train train my athletes. And he goes, do you know what today is? I said, it's May 1st. He goes, exactly. I said, okay, what, what's your point? He said, well, what you going to be doing the next 12 days? And I said, I don't know, probably fucking working. I'm broke like the rest of America. <laughs> You know, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to pay, you know, my bills from last month and the month coming up, you know. And um, he goes, OK. He said, well, what about he said, what about your fight? I said, I said what what fight? Dean? He said, you're not going to be training. I said, what fight are you talking about? I said, you did you you know, did you uh, y'all got a card lined up or something for island fights? That's what I thought it was. He goes, no. I said, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, I, I got to go train these kids. Like, I ain't sitting on my couch talking bullshit. What you got? He goes. You got to fight uh, May 13th in Jacksonville, Florida. I said, okay, with who? He goes, UFC. I was like, don't fuck with me, man. I'm not I'm not in the mood. Like, don't be fucking with me. Like, it's not, this ain't the time. You know what I mean? And uh, he's like, I'm dead serious. I said, seriously? He goes, four fight deal. Your son with UFC. He said, you're fighting in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, May 13th. I was like, are you serious? He goes, I swear to God. And he starts laughing. I was like, motherfucker. Because, I mean, I, I haven't, I didn't have a, a MMA fight all, all of uh, this year. I haven't had one. I don't think I, I don't think I had one last year either. I did have one last year. It was the beginning uh, of last year, but that was it. And then I started the bare knuckle, you know? And so I was like, I need to get another more, like at least a one more regional scene win before maybe I get some leeway in there. I mean, they did call for the contender series, but I was in the middle of the fire academy. So I kind of turned that down, but you know, uh, uh, I had had an MMA fight, and so uh, in a minute, and uh, PFL at the time had offered, had told us in February, told my managers that it, that they were going to, uh, they were they wanted to bring me in on the on the for the new season this summer. And I was like, all right, cool, that's cool, that's you know, that's money in the bag. They pay their fighters pretty good, you know. And I said, well, I still like the ultimate goal is to get to the UFC. You know what I mean? Like that's where I want to be. And um, and I said, well, let's do this. I said, let me go fight on the regional scene in March. We'll get another win. We'll go talk to Mick Maynard. And then um, we'll say, hey, Mick, you know, he's been offered by PFL, but he wants to sign with you. We got, we're got 4-0 since being released. Uh, you have anything? And he said, if they don't want me, then I'll go and sign with PFL. Well, my opponent in March backed out three days before the fight. So like, fuck, all right. We called PFL up. They said, we we're going a different route. We don't want Sherman anymore. Okay, shit. We called Mick up. 
Nick was like, all right, well, I don't know. Like, you know, like, we'll see. He hasn't fallen in a while. And, you know, basically just kind of being nice but saying kind of like, you're wasting my time. You know what I mean? You need some more wins. Um, so I was like, all right. So I set up another fight uh, for Kenny Garner uh, here in Biloxi for a, uh, for a title fight on a regional show. And Kenny is former M1 Global heavyweight champ from several years ago. Um, and that was going to be April 11th. Well, this shit happened. And that fight got canceled. So, you know, that's prob- that's a good chunk of change for me going down the drain in the last two months. So I'm just basically working as a fire- firefighter. The gyms are closed. So I'm not able to train any of my clients. Um, I'm just struggling, man, struggling for money. And uh, and I thought it was like, you know, I- I'm not a very God-fearing man, you know, <laughs> but I'm probably – pretty spiritual person, but I'm not super religious, you know, and I was just like, first time I prayed in a while, I was like, I need some, I need some fucking help, you know what I mean? I need some help, something, give me a sign or something. And it was about a day or so later that um, I was just working out at my little homemade gym I have in my garage and me and my buddies were, and someone was filming me, you know, a couple of lifts on Facebook or something. And my lieutenant at the fire station was like, Hey, will you train my little boys? Will you, you know, will you, uh, well, you um, work them out. You know, they haven't been able to do nothing. School's closed. They play baseball, football. And I was like, yeah, come on, bring them by. So I put him through a little workout. And he was taking some, he was filming a little bit. And his wife posted it on Facebook. And uh, and literally after she posted it, I like, like 10 moms were like, take my kid. Like, go do something with him. Get him out the damn house. You know, here's my money. Just work them out. You know, I was like, all right, cool. I was like, sure. So I I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I thought that was what my prayers were answered. You know what I mean? I'm like making a, a couple extra hundred bucks a week or whatever. I'm like, thank you. And um, and sure enough, the very next day, I'm, I'm that's when I get the call from Dean. I'm, I'm about to go train my kids. What you want? He's like, you're going to the UFC. I'm like, holy fucking shit. So, wow. and then it's just, it's been balls to the wall from there. You know, six days, six days, man, I had before I, before I flew out and I, I, done any training in over a month you know what i mean no nope, no training in over a month um except for weightlifting you know that was it and um and uh six days to get ready still training my kids it's all left you know what i mean you hear me yeah there you go yeah there you go i was just i was just, i didn't want to interrupt you but uh okay okay can you hear me though yep you're perfect all right, uh, so I, you know, I'm doing all the USADA stuff again, and um, I miss all that. I'm trying to find some time to get in there and, and to my coaches who also have lives um, and things going on. I'm like calling them up and being like, "Hey, look, dude, I got six days. Like, come help me or something," you know. And I, and um, so it was, dude. It's been balls to wall. I haven't stopped. Um, and uh, and then we, you know, we we drove down there, and the rest is history. With it coming together so quickly, like you said, you were you were boss of the wall, just getting to Jacksonville, getting to the fight. Did you even did you know anything about Ikeville in a way? Like obviously, you know he's he's a he's a thirty six year old guy. He finally got his opportunity. This is a huge moment for him. But did you have any time to even look at any footage or learn much about him heading into it? I I watched like film once. Um, my coach watched my my my, my striking coach watched once and. And uh, that was about it. And then we was like, um, this is what we see. And this is what we're going to work on because we don't have a lot of time to really de- to devise an intricate game plan. You know what I mean? We have we have to go with – because you know what I mean? We don't have a bunch of time to, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. If that don't work, we'll do this, this, and this. So we're basically like, okay, let's keep it simple and uh, just re- do repetition, repetition, repetition after that. So that was it. That, you know, that was it. Watched the film, film once and said, this this should be able to should be able to work, and we'll go with it from there, you know. So um, – and it did, you know. Um, and just muscle memory kind of took over. And like I said, the the bare-knuckle boxing really helped with me with my hands and my timing and my technique a little bit better as far as, like, turning over my punches and being more precise. Um just being a lot smoother instead of just trying to be so fast, you know, and arm punching everything. Um, so it felt a lot different, man. Like I went in, and I went into that and I was like, damn, I, I was like, I feel like I wasn't, you know, I, I was like, I feel like I wasn't wasting a whole lot of energy or, you know, it was, I felt calm and, 
I feel like I wasn't, you know, landing big shots. And then I went back and watched film and I was like, holy fuck. Like I was like, there was some heat being thrown and I was trying to take that guy's head off. You know, that last elbow, if it would have landed, like probably he might still be in the hospital. I don't know if you've seen that or not, but oh yeah, the Lord blessed him right there. What did you, um, what did you make of the very unique fight week experience during such a crazy time in the world? Like one thing that you said in this conversation that stuck out to me was you wanted to enjoy the process more and enjoy going to the cities. And there was some social media footage of you out training on the beach and stuff. So you got to at least get out and, and do something outside of the hotel. But you know, with the testing and everything, what did you make of the, uh, the fight week experience? Um, really the only, really only the first day was kind of a cluster for me. And it wasn't nothing the UFC did. They had it all rolling pretty smoothly. Um, but just for me, like we we drove there, so we were driving all day, and then well, and then we got there, and um, you know, unpacking all your shit, and then so. But before you could go up to the room and relax, you and before you could check in, you had to get tested. And uh, it was a pretty smooth process. Just going in, and sign on all, all the paperwork that, that that we normally do on fight week, and then um, kind of wait your turn to get tested. Um, process took maybe 15 minutes with everybody, you know, moving in front of you and stuff and, um, and got the results. And then it was pretty much normal for there. If we, we came downstairs to the, to anywhere, like to go downstairs, we just have to get our temperature taken, taken. Um, and they'd give us a wristband after we're, our temp was taken and we'd be good to go for the rest of the day. So it was pretty simple. You know, it wasn't too big of a deal. Um, you know, uh, yeah, so it was weird, but I mean, we're in strange times right now, man. So I'm not going to complain about anything. I think they did a really good job. The leg kicks were scoring big time in the first round, and you admitted yourself after the fight that you veered away from the game plan a little bit late in that round. Ike was starting to land a little bit. It was starting to turn into a dogfight a little bit. But second round, you came out and you slowed things down a little bit and got the finish early on. What was the conversation like between rounds with your coaches to help sort of snap you back into that more methodical approach? Well, man, I just have, um, like you said later in the rounds, I kind of um, have a tendency of uh, when I'm getting like kind of bum rushed or whatever that I'll, I'll just, you know, lean back and I get caught and then I'll, you know, return two or three. Uh, but, um, I don't know. I just get kind of excited, you know, towards like, I guess towards the end of the round. That's how, that's how I spar too, you know, like I'll be more methodical in the beginning. And then towards the end of the round, the last minute and a half, two minutes, I'm typically trying to pick up the pace and really put it on them. Um, I was trying to put the pressure on them, uh, obviously going into this, to the second round, like wearing them down, break them down a little bit mentally, you know what I mean? And physically as well. Um, so I'll pick up the pace at the end of the first round and then, Hopefully, by you know, go, when he's going to the store, he's like, fuck, you know, I kind of had to defend a bombardment right there, you know, exhaust him out a little bit towards the end of the first. But, um, yeah, I do get caught in those exchanges more than I'd like to. Um, but I went to the second knowing that I needed to just kind of stay in the pocket a little bit more and, um, and kind of um, use my guard, you know, shell up a little bit more and then return the combos versus fading back because he was coming in hard. So I knew if I stood my ground and showed up, he was going to be right in the clinch range and then the elbow range because he, he just coming on a linear path. He's not he wasn't cutting his angles or anything off of his combos. He's coming straight in and then he wasn't even moving out, back out. You know what I mean? So he was coming straight in. So I was like, OK, shell up, put him in the clinch. Boom. I landed the big knee. He came back in again. I faded up, faked him out with the knee. I was, like, I was going to hit him with the knee, let his head slide up. Boom hit him with the elbow and then the one, two, put him up against the fence and then just try to finish him from there. But he was a tough guy, you know? So, um, I asked my, asked my coaches in between rounds if the leg kicks were working because you never, you know, you don't know really what's going on. You're such a weird kind of state of mind when you're fighting. You don't know if stuff's landing hard or not. And they were like, do not stop fucking leg kicking him. Do not stop. I was like, okay. And soon enough, sure enough, like I got off the stool and I looked over there across the ring at his leg and it already had a huge hematoma on him, on his, on his, on his calf. And I was like, and it was bruising. I was like, yeah, you're about to get kicked some more, buddy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty much the game plan. 
as if the win wasn't enough for you, I'm sure that was a, just an amazing moment to get back in there and, and get the win. I think fans were very excited when they were graced with your return to Twitter after the fight. You referenced your promo afterwards uh, with Daniel Cormier, the ordering 10 chicken wings and getting 11 feeling, which was amazing. Fans are pumped to see the, the the gift king back on Twitter. What was the reason for the for the layoff? For I think it was it was almost a year since you were off Twitter. Yeah, well, man, because dude, people are fucking ruthless online. You know what I mean? It's ruthless, and it's real. I mean, I just didn't want that kind of negativity in my life anymore. When I already had enough negativity going on, like I'm getting cut from the UFC. And, and I mean, my whole life's changing and I don't want to have to log on to Twitter and see fucking 20,000 people tell me how bad I fucking suck. You know what I mean? At life when they're sitting home on their couch with their thumb up their ass, you know what I mean? And you can't really do nothing about it, you know? So I just didn't want to, I don't have to deal with that anymore. And so, um, I logged off for a while and, um, yeah, that was it. I mean, I just, I was done with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> You posted that you posted a video of your son watching your fight and cheering you on. And as a dad myself, just uh, an amazing thing to see. How did you react to seeing that video after you got that win? Oh man, I teared up, man. I was, I've watched it a million times. You know, it's shit. They played um, right before I walked out. They were showing clips from previous fights and one where I, uh, I, um, uh, I brought him into the ring and stuff, and and. Um, and I was like, damn, man, like, like right before I walked out, I was like already tearing up. You know what I mean? I seen it and I was like, shit, get emotional. But um, it was cool. It was cool. Uh, last thing for you, like, I appreciate you giving me so much time, but uh, it didn't take long for the first post UFC return victory call out to take place against you on Saturday. Rodrigo Nascimento picked up a second round submission win over Dante Mays and called to fight you upon his return to the octagon. Did you hear about that call out? And if so, how did you react to it? Um, uh, yeah, I did. I was, I was, uh, I'm a, I'm a buddy's house. And, um, we was, you know, going to watch the fights, the main card, at least that, uh, Saturday. And, um, we celebrating. I just got back in town from Jacksonville and, um, I rode my, um, my, me and my old lady stayed in um, Orange Beach, Alabama, and I brought my Harley out there, and we rode around and hung out at the beach in the condo and stuff. So I, I drove back home, and we started to have some beers and stuff like that. And my cousin was grilling out, and they was having a good time. And then, you know, I got the cup. I logged on to Facebook, and I see, like, me getting tagged and all this stuff about being called out, and I started getting text messages. And I'm, I was just like, okay, whatever it is, you know, whatever. And – um. And beforehand, you know, back when I was in the UFC before, I'd have been like, you know, like, what the fuck? You know, like, before I even realized who it was or what was said, I'm already on Twitter, like, you know, I'll fight you or whatever, like, sign it up. But, man, we're taking a different approach to things this this go around. And um, I'm not going to let my pride get in the way of my legacy. Um, so, with that being said, is, like, we're going – we went and we were studying film and – trying to do the things that, you know, we need to do. And I told Mick and those guys, like, when we go into this, I'm going to make sure I'm ready. You know what I mean? I haven't done anything in two months. And um, and they wanted me to fight in July. And I'm like, you know, I'm not fighting this guy in July because where, where's the benefit there? He's a, he's a very – he's a very skilled fighter. There's no, there's no market for it. You know what I mean? He doesn't have much of a name. And it's like, what, what's the, where, where does that benefit me? Where does that benefit my career? You know what I mean? You want me to go fight him later in the year? Fine, let's do it. You know what I mean? Let's go. But I want, I'm want i in July? So what? I have June, basically June to get ready. You know what I mean? And so it's like, no, I'm, I'm not, you know, that's, my coach was like, that's not a smart fight. Manager was like, that's not a smart fight. So I'm going to listen to them. You know what I mean? I'm not going to let my pride get in the way and go into a knockdown, drag out fight and then, potentially be one and one you know what i mean then what you know and then everybody as soon as i lose a fight like oh yeah we knew it we knew it you know he's just a bum you know so we're gonna do things smart the whole fucking first part of my career i try to be a company man and take all these fights that i knew i shouldn't have took on short notice i had seven fights in the ufc my first go around six of them were on short notice and i think everybody i lost to is in the top 15 top 10 you know what i mean so it's like 
shit, that don't nobody cares about who you fought or who you lost to or if you took it on short notice or if you're trying to please the matchmakers or Dana White. Nobody cares about that. You know what I mean? What they care about is wins and losses. That's it. So I learned that the hard way. So not going out chasing the money, not going out chasing the um, big paychecks and and and, and, and taking stupid fights, you know, I'm going to fight when I'm ready and when I'm, and I'm going to fight, you know, who I want to fight, you know, and then when the time comes, we'll make the big matchups happen. You know what I mean? There's already a few, there's already a few fish I want to fry out there. You know what I mean? But right now we're going to slow play it, build the, build the career up, get a couple new contracts and then we'll start looking at some bigger fights, you know? So that's where I was. You know what I mean? Jace, congratulations, man. Amazing performance. Good to see you back in the UFC. Good to see you back on Twitter. Enjoy it. Smell the roses for a bit. Look forward to seeing what is next for you down the line. And hopefully the the, the fellow firefighters aren't grilling you too bad and making you clean toilets or anything after getting a win. I know how that works. My father was a uh, yeah, firefighter. Yeah, so. yeah. Hey, t- yesterday was uh, last, yesterday's shift was my last day as a, as a recruit, man. So I put my year in, did the academy. I put my year in at, 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 on rotations. And um, so I'm going from a uh, uh, from a uh, uh, graduating from a maggot to a fly. So you know what I mean. I ain't got you know what I mean. I'm, I'm gonna be a one officially a firefighter one, and um, we're gonna go from there. I finally be able to sit in the recliners instead of having to watch TV at the dinner table. So it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be real nice. There's a lot to be congratulated for. That's another know, thing. Man. Thank you for the good, time, man. Good. This is this is amazing, man. Congratulations. It's good to see you back. All right, I get to talk to you. Bye.